thanks everyone. Um, sorry, uh, I don't know if uh, we're on a timeline or not here, so I'll, I've got a half hour to tell you something. I think after what we've just heard might sound a little bit controversial. Uh, I like to think of it as a little bit more holistic. Um, basically, as she said, I, I did have a chain of many spas and I owned 20 lasers and sat through several lectures um, with lots of convincing evidence, and I'm not an anti-laser guy. But I will tell you that there's always the good and the bad of laser, obviously. There's a lot of negative side effects, a lot of people that don't get results. And so what I'm talking to you about today is basically a, uh, an alternative view. And what you're going to hear, actually, is this, this is quite common sense. Um, a couple of years ago, and I, uh, my, my first company was called Cosmetics, and um, we were very heavy into exfoliation. And this is not a product class, by the way. This is uh, meant to be quite independent. Um, and I was an exfoliator, like uh, many of us are, like this industry is. In fact, for the last 20 years, uh, I would say that the vast majority of the focus of anti-aging procedures has been based on, I mean, other than lasers, which some of them are exfoliating, others are heat-based, as they've been talking about. Um, exfoliation has been a major part of, of the way we're treating the skin. And so what I'm hoping to do here today is just expand your thought process to uh, a potentially different way of looking at it. Boy, these things are sensitive, aren't they? So obviously, um, if a patient like this presented to your office, you might be inclined to actually uh, want to exfoliate her. I don't blame you. Uh, there's obviously uh, a significant amount of damage uh, this woman's carrying from years and years of photo damage. Let me drop this down. Um, so. What are we talking about that's different? Well, first let me define for you, and you're obviously probably very familiar with all of these um, issues, but this is where I look at uh, what can I address if I'm trying to treat the skin, if I'm actually trying to reverse aging in the skin, which would ultimately, ultimately be my goal, um, what are the things that I feel like I have to target? And as I mentioned, for the last 20 years, we spent a lot of time focusing on exfoliation, and uh, one of the main sort of, as I call it, a diversions, uh, was in fact that we were trying to address the slow epidermal turnover. We say, well, you know, we're going to do different traumatic uh, components to the skin to try to create change, to try to promote collagen. But boy, if I could, you know, when we think about the epidermis, the number one thing I want to do is get it back up to, say, a 30-day cycle, which is considered to be the, uh, the appropriate youthful rate of uh, turnover. And what we've seen is when someone's skin is operating at a 30-day turnover cycle, it looks better. It's healthier, and we can all be happy about that. So slowed epidermal turnover, uh, obviously a focus, but I'm going to try to, uh, again, take a little bit different view on that. If you look to the right here at these pictures, it's just a reminder here, do I have a laser? Yeah. Um, that a lot of times, especially the layperson, obviously not us, but the layperson has this view that the wrinkles on their face are primarily associated with a surface problem. And as we all know, uh, the problem is actually in the dermis. And I guess my biggest problem uh, with skin care and with the typical anti-aging protocols that are out there today is so much of the effort and, and focus has been placed on what can I do to the epidermis to make the epidermis look better, when in fact, as we all know, the epidermis is self-replicating, it does not age for the most part, uh, and it's the dermis where we actually have to create the most amount of change. And so, if we're going to create change in the dermis, we have to change what we're doing. And, and let me just go down uh, with a few things here in a moment. So, first and foremost, as we get into the dermis, what are we looking at? What are the main issues? Well, as we age, every year we get less and less circulation going into our dermis. Uh, this can relate to a few different things. Number one, uh, as we know, uh, our heart pumps a little bit less effectively every year. Uh, we also know that photo damage will create a scar tissue along the endothelium of the vascular wall. And as we all probably recall, the vascular wall is the main source of food, nutrients, proteins, enzymes, lipids, growth factors. Everything virtually the skin needs comes from the, from the vascular supply. And so as we continue to focus on our, uh, well, what happened to the collagen from the sun, sometimes we forget that in, indeed the uh, endothelial wall is uh, subject to the same sorts of uh, plaque buildup or if you want uh, scar tissue buildup that occurs on the outside of the wall which then leads to a problem with diffusion, that's going to create a problem. Then you have the other additional problem, which is that the capillary bed continues to decline in its thickness over time. Um, 
What we also notice, it may be directly related to the vascular supply, but we also notice that the fibroblasts decline in number and in activity. So they become less efficient in their production and, and there are fewer of them available. And of course this gets even more critical because as we get to the more traumatic procedures that we're choosing, like this, the procedures that we just talked about in this last class, um, we all understand something here and that is that we are wholly dependent on the health of our patient's skin for the outcome. In other words, if we get aggressive with someone and they are immunosuppressed, their skin is unhealthy, they don't have a significant amount of fibroblast activity, maybe their vascular supply is also diminished, then they are going to heal more poorly. And I think there's one thing that's clear, and again, I'm not a laser basher, but we all scratch our head and we go, why did this person have such an incredible result, say, from Thermage or some other treatment um, similar to that, and yet this patient had no result whatsoever. And almost in entirely, uh, the, the blame should be put back on the patient, and we don't obviously blame them specifically, but we have to start looking at what is the capability of our patients to heal. And there's a huge danger here. I mean, we're looking at some of these procedures. There's a, a lot of negative outcomes that can occur, and what I want to talk to you about today is really getting into the concept of how do we restore the health of the skin, because I don't think we've been really trying to do that for the last 20 years. So. As we go down um, past the epidermis right to the dermal epidermal junction, uh, I think actually one of the most surprising things to me is how little conversation is placed on that. Remember that the epidermis and the entire uh, epidermal process is wholly dependent on the diffusion of nutrients from the dermis to the epidermis. The reti ridges are critical. We all know that as the skin ages, those flatten out. We lose tissue. We lose there's less surface area for us to be able to transfuse nutrients, lipids, proteins, enzymes, antioxidants, everything the epidermis would need, except for oxygen. Interestingly enough, oxygen